Hello everyone, my name is Franco Pucci and I am the technical consultant for the STS Association. I have been involved in the prepayment industry for over 25 years. Welcome to the STS training video series where we will explore all aspects of STS and the STS standard. I hope you find these videos helpful. Let's look at key management. What we're going to look at here is key hierarchy, how all the keys related. And this is quite a complex process, but it's good to have the knowledge about it. The meter production process, how you get keys into the meters when you manufacture them. But first, some definitions we're going to be using. If you want a full set of definitions, look at STS 002-1, which is a glossary of terms, and also the IEC 62055-41 document. The first one we can look at is supply group code, abbreviated as SGC. This is a six digit number that denotes a geographical area for the installation of meters. It is allocated by the key management center. Key type or KT, a one digit number denoting the type of key that the meter is coded to. Initialization, default, unique or common. The key revision number or KRN, it's a number in the range of 0 to 9. And this is the revision of the vending key. The vending key itself, a 128-bit random key used to generate the meter key. A tariff index in the range of 1 to 99, denoting the meter tariff. A token identifier, or TID. We'll talk plenty more about this one in future videos. This is the number of minutes expired since the base date start. The decoder key generation algorithm, or DKGA. This is the algorithm used to generate the meter key. Now let's look at the key hierarchy used in the STS ecosystem. The key hierarchy can be found if you want to refer to it in STS 600-4-2. The entities involved in this key hierarchy, first of all, you have the utility where the meters are actually installed. You have a key management center, which generates, supplies and stores keys. You have a security module, which is used to encrypt tokens. You have a point of sale, which is used to generate tokens on a vending system. And you have the meter, which essentially controls the supply of electricity, water, gas, or time to the house. And then you have the consumer, which is the end user. So how do we get the keys into the meter to start with? Well. The whole process is, first of all, the utility needs to get a supply group. That supply group is generated at the, uh, or allocated at the key management center. And then associated with that supply group, or SGC, you have a key revision number and a key type, whether it's unique, common, default. A random number is generated uh, in, internally in a secure module in the key management center and it is completely random. Nobody has access to this number. Nobody knows what it is. This becomes your vending key. And this vending key becomes associated with the supply group code, the key revision number and the key type, along with a few others. The vending key itself is then encrypted under a system master key using an AES192 algorithm and stored away in a database. Once again, it's very important to note that nobody knows what this vending key is. Then a key agreement needs to be set up between the security module and the key management center so that they can securely transfer data. This will form part of another video, so I won't discuss it too much now. But once they've done this, it means that they can share a secret. Okay, essentially. When the secure module needs to get a vending key, what it does is it issues a key load request or vending key load request using the key management center's public key encrypts it and it sends it off to the key management center. The key management center then takes that vending key out of the uh, database and using a elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman algorithm, it takes the secure module's public key, encrypts it and sends everything back via a VKload response or a key load file. This is a plain text file which can come back via an email. That VKLO response file it is then entered into the secure module by the point of sale system. It uses, once again, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman to extract 
the vending keys out of the keyload file. Now you have a vending key. The next thing that happens is the point of sale now needs to generate a decoder key in order to be able to generate a token. For that, it takes the meter number, supply group code, tariff index, key revision number, key type, feeds it into the security module using a decoder key generation algorithm. In this case, I've marked DKGA04. Out of that comes the decoder key. Once you have the decoder key, then the consumer makes a payment for a certain amount. The point of sale looks at the date and time and says, well, there's my TID. The consumer hands in a meter number that he wants to purchase credit for. Then using encryption algorithm EA07 or EA11 and the decoder key you've just generated inside the security module, a token is generated. Once that token is generated, it can then be entered into the meter by the consumer. The meter itself already has a decoder key or DK, which has been put in at the factory a long time ago and independently of this operation. And using EA07 or EA11, it decrypts the token. Out of the token, it extracts a token identifier or TID, that is the same TID that was used to create the token, and a credit amount, which it puts into its accounting register. The TID that it extracts goes into a TID memory in the meter, and it is used for cancellation of the token or to check that the token has not been used before, or that it's too old. Then supply comes through to the meter, the meter measures that supply, and as it's using it, it debits the account register until the account register reaches zero. When it reaches zero, then a disconnect command is issued to the switch in the meter, which then disconnects the supply to the user's premises. So that's quite a mouthful, but essentially that's the key hierarchy and what each key means uh, within the STS ecosystem. So how do the keys get into the meter? I mentioned before that, that the, the meter already has a key. Well, let's have a look at how they get in. So this is a production process. Essentially, you have three stations, and they may be different for different production processes, but essentially they, they would do this. You have a DITK injection station, an encryption station, and a security module. Now, the DITK is an initialization key. It is the only key that is known in the clear. In other words, you can read it. And that is typically only known by a few people within the manufacturing company and within the manufacturing process. At this point, you inject the initialization key into the meter. Now, that is a known key. However, the meter is not going anywhere yet. The next production process to happen is uh, encryption of the meter to an unknown key. It's a known SGC, obviously, but it's an unknown meter key. And this is done by key change tokens. At this point, you would change the meter from its DITK <clears throat> to either a default key, DDTK, a unique key, DUTK, or a common key, DCTK. And that is done using key change tokens, which are generated inside a security module. You cannot do this process without a security module. The security module obviously has a supply group code inside it and the vending key inside it um, for that particular supply group. Then the meter can be shipped out to the customer. So that is the process for getting the key inside the meter, which will match exactly the meter key that is generated by a security module out in the field because they both use the same meter parameters and they both use the same decoder key generation algorithm. So what is a security module? Uh, it's the first time we're mentioning this. Well, essentially a security module is a high security device used to generate tokens. There are several available in the, in, in the, uh, in the STS world. There are a couple of suppliers and it can either be a rack mounted, which is the lower picture there, uh, which is a high speed module, or it could be a serial mounted, which is a, a low speed module that can be sitting right next to a point of sale. It's used for token encryption and key storage. Uh, it does not store decoder keys. Please bear that in mind, it only stores vending keys. It's used in production, uh, as we've previously just discussed, and that would be a manufacturing module. The ones used in vending are vending modules. Manufacturing modules cannot generate credit tokens. 
they can only generate tokens for key changing meters uh, whereas the vending module can generate both key change tokens and uh, management tokens and uh, obviously credit tokens you cannot use a virtual security module although the STSA makes one available for use it's only there for testing you cannot use a virtual security module for a live system you can get high speed or low speed modules uh, the the top picture shows a low speed module also limited in how many keys it can store and the bottom picture shows a high speed module and it can also store a lot more keys okay i mentioned already it can only contain vending keys not meter keys and obviously all of these are tamper proof the moment you try and open them it actually erases its own memory this brings us to the end of this part of the video series i hope you found this video helpful and hope you will join us for the rest of the series. Goodbye and see you again soon.